Hey guys, it's Cal from The Lighting Doctor here. So this is what I woke up to this morning. We got uh, roughly, I don't know, close to six to eight inches of snow. So I figure I got time to put uh, another video online. We've been shooting a lot of videos about different landscape lighting techniques. Uh, and just yesterday I posted a brief summary of the three most popular types of landscape lighting techniques that are out there, which is up lighting, path lighting, and down lighting. And now I'm going to give you uh, the full video uh, with all the information is probably going to be about a 30 minute video here So I hope you guys enjoy that. This is uh, all thanks to FX Luminaire has been putting together some great training videos And we just want to share those with you guys. So um, big shout out to them and keep your questions coming to cal at lightingdoctor.ca And I hope that you guys are having a better day outside than I am. So thanks for watching Tell me about your lighting plan here. Yeah, so the, on the front of the house, we have two separate lighting needs. Okay. We have the landscape and as well as the architecture of the home. Okay. Now, uh, so let's start with landscape then. Sure. How did you decide to light up uh, this section, maybe this, this maple here? On this maple, we chose the PB wall wash. Mm -hmm. Now it's a little smaller of a maple and it's real wide. Okay. So instead of using two up lights, mm -hmm. we use one wall wash. Well, I'm sure that helps with really with that, the width of the canopy. That's right, it looks great. And it probably saves the homeowner a little bit because you need one fixture rather than two. Maybe exactly. it simplifies your design too. Exactly. Good, good. Tell me about the, the architecture then. Sure, on the architecture we used up lighting and we have one up light on both sides of the window. Okay. And then we have one up light behind the bush mm -hmm. and it's going all the way up to the peak. Okay. Well, focusing on that really probably takes the light out of the window, is that right? That's correct. We, we strategically put the up light behind the bush to, to kind of guard the window mm -hmm. from the light. Interesting, now what happens as that, that, that bush grows? Right, what we would like to do when the bush grows is come in with a 12 inch riser mm -hmm. to get the light above the bush and back up to the peak. That makes sense, that makes, that makes really the light pretty consistent I would think around the stonework and, and kind of keeping the light out of the window itself. That's right. So John, tell me what do you have going on here? We have a boulder wall and on top of the boulder wall, we have landscaping and a few trees. And so how did you decide to light this area? The wall, we use the PB wall wash. Yeah. We want more texture on the wall. Okay. So we use it two feet. The further you go out, you lose that little bit of texture. Okay, so close to the wall, lots of texture, farther from the wall, what, a very flat? Yeah, you start flattening out your wall a little bit. Okay. Which is a fine look. Sure, so uh, what about the trees here? The trees we use the up lighting and our viewing angle is from over here. So of course we used one up light going up the tree. Yeah. Now in in this case you used one. Do you ever use two or three or when do you decide to do that? Yeah, as the tree grows, sometimes you might need to add a second light. Okay. Um, that it might be two, that might be five, six years. Okay. So it just depends on that, on the time frame and the growth of the tree. That's right. And even the various viewing angles for the homeowner, is that correct? That's correct, yep. Now, what about the, the pruning of the tree? Is that important? Yeah, as, as the foliage grows, it sometimes blocks the light. Mm -hmm. uh, we always recommend the homeowner prune maybe once or twice a year. And that's important because the foliage blocks the light, but yet the branching structure is really highlighted by the light itself. Is that right? That's exactly right. Okay, so the light can really go much farther than the tree, and you can take advantage of less light, really, if you keep the, the tree very well pruned. Exactly. Up lighting is the most dramatic type of landscape lighting. Let's review some basics. Trees are traditionally illuminated with up lights, with a special focus to ensure all areas of the tree are highlighted from the necessary viewing areas. Use long shrouds or hex baffles, 
when the light source is visible to your general audience. Focus on lighting the trunk and branching structure of a tree instead of the leaves. Always ensure that the tree is properly pruned. Wall washes are a great option for shrubs, walls, and boulders. To add light while hiding the fixture, use in-grade lights. Don't forget to highlight the architectural features of a house. Uplights are the most impactful way to bring color into a landscape. Wow, we're at a great day. Yeah, it's so nice today. All right, so John, tell me a little bit about this pathway and how you decided to light it. Yeah, so here we have the traditional path lighting. Okay. Uh, we're alternating from side to side. Uh, we're evenly spaced out between each path light, mm -hmm. and we're spaced about eight feet between each path light. Eight, and why eight feet on this path light? We chose eight feet to evenly, we want an even light throughout the walk. Okay. Now, uh, did the height of the riser for the path lights affect the distance in which you spaced it? It did. So we use a 12 inch mm -hmm. riser on these path lights. If we were to use the 18 inch, mm -hmm. we could probably space out the path lights a little more as it's gonna put out a little more light. And what do you think that spacing would be? 10 th feet, 12 feet? I think 12 feet for the 18 inch riser would be perfect. Okay, I definitely agree. That was a good good call to bring them a little bit closer. This this sidewalk is a little bit inconsistent with the, the rock and the media intermixed with the sidewalk. So. It's definitely a good call to, to keep it on the air on the safe side for uh, for this situation. Oh, I love the colors here. This is great. Yeah, it looks looks really good. So, John, tell me about how you designed these stairs here. Well, the main staircase from the house to the pool are these stairs. Okay. They're very important yeah. to be to be illuminated. Uh, we used two different approaches. Uh, the first way we did was with the traditional path light. Okay, yeah. Uh, the traditional path lights are, are great. They put off light not only on your steps, but you're going to get the plant material mm -hmm. below the path light. Yeah. Uh, the second way is my personal favorite is we use the PB wall wash light. And what we're doing with this light is we're putting light on the boulder as well as the plant material and getting a residual light back towards the path light. Mm -hmm. that, that is my favorite way to light up, not only pathways, but stairs as well. So I'm, I'm really glad to see that you did that. This is a great path. Yeah, we thought so too when we uh, first started the design here. And so our challenge here was to continue to light this path, right. but since on the rest of the site, we hadn't really used path lights, mm -hmm. uh, we needed to find alternative ways of lighting this path. Yeah. Uh, so we uh, hung up a few uh, pendant lights uh, from some of these trees and then we have some down lights as well uh, to kind of glow this path here yeah that's great i love how the the up lights next to the trees are uh really provide a lot of residual light that really light up the pathway anyway yeah and, and it definitely does do that nice uh, little ambient glow coming off of these trees in here yeah and i love how uh path lights are probably the second most popular fixture that people use um, but we don't always have to use path lights. Using the pendants as you, as you did, some directional down lights. I think I see a JB up here in the top. Mm -hmm. Those are great ways to light up the pathway itself without even having to use path lights. Yeah, and, uh, and it's great that uh, we had those options to go to because uh, it was a challenge to find a way to light this path without, without the path lights. Yeah, it looks great. I love it. All right, let's, let's see what else you have. Okay. Different approach with some of the pathways and driveway lighting here. But we'll see a better example of it right over here. Okay. Um, as we kind of walk through this uh, entrance to this path here, we use these uh, NLs okay. just kind of highlight this entrance. Oh, that's nice. You, like, you could really highlight the, the entire post as well as it probably gives you a, a really clean uh, transition of light here at the center. Yeah, you get nice little pool of light, makes this kind of an inviting pathway to come down. Perfect. What else do you have over here? Uh, so you can see we uh, did focus in on the driveway using those posts. So uh, we staggered uh, these posts and used the DE down lights okay. all along this area. Uh, gives nice little wash effect across the uh, driveway here. Well, yeah, it's a, it's a very wide driveway and a typical directional path light would, would not come near the length of that. So I think that's a great application to use a DE down light. It'll get you a very wide spread and it'll be able to wash the uh, the entire pathway. So I like I think that's a great application. Yeah, and at night it looks fantastic with the stagger and uh, we, we're really happy with the way it turned out. Nice, nice. And then here uh, also we have these uh, boxwood globes. Uh, we wanted to do something a little different okay. just to mix up the effect a little mm -hmm. bit. 
Uh, so we put some PBs for a nice soft wash nice. behind on this nice green wall mm -hmm. and then kind of silhouette actually uh, each of these globes and that way we get kind of a different effect so we can yeah. kind of combine a few different effects here and not just always you know uplight everything and uh, kind of gives a nice silhouette of these uh, round globes. That's nice. How many uh, how many PBs did you put along here or how did you know how far to space them? Yeah, so uh, we kind of toyed with back and forth what we were supposed to do on that, but we ended up doing every other because there's a fair amount of them here. Okay. And uh, we didn't want to kind of blow the homeowner away with too many lights. Uh, just give them an example of, of that effect, that mm -hmm. silhouetting effect. Yeah, that, those PBs do a very a great job because they're very widespread. So I could see that being a great, a great application there. So Mark, tell me a little bit about this site. So again, we're in a, another site here in my town and, and it, it's a property that's very quaint and personable and, and we need to look and see what FX features really would enhance this property. Okay, and so what did you choose? We, we chose PMs. Yeah. For the most part, obviously we're using it for, for a path light. Okay. But the, the best part about this light is it's bleeding over into the landscape beds and, mm -hmm. and highlighting the plants and even over into a decking mm -hmm. space that we have over here too. PM is a, a unique application for lighting paths because typically on a path light, we don't want to see the source of the light. We just want to see the effect of the light, right? Correct. But in this case, we're actually making the, the bollard itself as a marker light as well. Yep. So we see the source. But my favorite part about that source, it's very diffused. It has a solid acrylic lens. And so it allows the light to bleed into a variety of different areas. So Mark, tell me about the controllability of these fixtures. Uh, all these fixtures on this side are all ZDC. Okay. So maximum amount of creativity for the homeowner. Yeah. So with the ZDC capability, do you find that the homeowner's changing the colors a lot? I do. For example, the, they don't put Christmas lights up anymore. Okay. They're able to do it by, by just changing the colors of the ZDCs. Great. You know, my favorite part about the ZDC is not only that you can change the colors for special events like Christmas or uh, special holidays or events that we're celebrating, but the fact that you could always go back to white makes the, the ZDC capabilities complementary to, to any landscape. Not very much so. So Chris, tell me what you have here. What we've got here is uh, we're standing in the lawn area. It's a, kind of a play area, gathering spot in the evenings yeah. for families and kids. Uh, transitions into a annual bed with the uh, flowers being changed out several times throughout the year. And then we've got a fountain there behind us as well. Okay, so, <laughs> so why did you use path lights in this area? We chose path lights for two reasons. We wanted to create a barrier at night to separate this area from the, the planting in the fountains so mm -hmm. that parents could see their kids if they started to run this way. Yeah. We also wanted to illuminate. They pay a lot of money to get these flowers put in several times throughout the year. So we wanted to go ahead and make sure that those were illuminated as well. Now I noticed with the path lights you used a, a higher riser. Why so? Uh, we chose the 18s over the standard 12 because we wanted to get more light output, throw further into the bed and throw further out onto the, the uh, grass here. Just it's more of a safety feature, going okay. up higher, getting more light out here because it is a public place. Okay. And with, uh, with the higher riser and the, the wider throw, how often were you able to space them? Uh, about We went about 10 feet here. Um, general recommendation, whatever your linear length is, divide that by your number of fixtures and just make sure that there's an even pattern of light. Okay. Perfect. Well, Ryan, this final area here, we, uh, we're trying to get some light over to the gates just uh -huh. to kind of make people aware of the entranceway into the pool. Yeah. Um, we had a couple choices here. We could have used some path lights, but we decided to go with the FC ground wash. This is unique. It's low profile. It's not going to get kicked or bumped, broken. Uh, with path lights, you got a lot of kids and families coming through here with pool toys. Mm -hmm. um, path lights we thought would get destroyed and knocked over. Well, what I like about the fixture is it's very unobtrusive. It's out of the way. Most people wouldn't even see that it's there during the day. And the light source is really hidden at night. That's true, they don't see it during the day, but at night it does a really nice cast of light right across this hardscape. But uh, this worked perfect for the application.
Let's recap some Pathlight fundamentals. Traditionally, pathways are designed with Pathlights. Stagger the placement of each fixture for a classic look or align them evenly for a more modern look. Since Pathlights are usually installed to enhance nighttime safety for pedestrians, spacing should be consistent along the entire path. When you have a tree or structure above the pathway, use downlights to bring a natural light to the area without drawing attention to the fixtures. If you have a high traffic area and you can't use downlights or path lights, FX Luminaire also has in-grade lights and wall lights that wash the path. Mark, this is a nice landscape that you have here. Tell me what's happening. Well, again, I think we found the perfect application for a JB downlight okay. to highlight our landscape bed down here. So you're using down lights, looks like directional down lights highlighting, is it just this area or is it spreading out to the path? Well, it, there's a little bit of bleed over, but okay. because we use the longer hoods on the front of the JBs, it okay. really does centric the light slowly in this bed, but it does give a wonderful glow to it. What I like about your selection here is you don't need any path lights. It's not, there's no tripping hazards, uh, nothing for anybody to kick over. You're, you're isolating the light source at the top. It really allows the light to transition smoothly and it makes a very inviting and comfortable look for those who are in this space. Completely. Now, Mike, we're at the, the edge of the property in the backyard and we're under, underneath this great tree. Tell me a little bit about the tree, this area, and how you decided to light it. Okay, what we have here is, a, is an old mature Palo Verde, which really kind of lends itself to uh, different aspects. We certainly get the height, which is a, uh, you know, you have to take advantage of here in Arizona because not a lot of trees grow tall. But when you have an okay. instance like this, we chose to put a PS hanging light here with, uh, you can have a three, a six, or a nine LED in it. As the tree matures or grows larger, you can certainly uh, adapt to that aspect, but the, the benefit of it is you really get your bang for the buck, and for, for one fixture, you really mm -hmm. encompasses quite a bit of light. Now, I like your use of the PS because it, this is an unusual use of this fixture, right? It's, it's typically a surface-mounted downlight, right. but in this case, we've put a hanging bracket mount on it and mm -hmm. used it as a pendant. But you only used one. Now, tell me, what are the benefits of using a single downlight as opposed to typical uplights that you might find? Well, uh, in my opinion, I, I really like the aspect of the hanging light and, and uh, due to the fact that we have such a great amount of height, mm -hmm. that one light can do the job of, in, of, of two or three other lights if mm -hmm. they were lower. Um, now, that with that, it will look very natural because it kind of moves with the, with the type of bracketing system that we have, yeah. the hanging bracketing system, illuminates the tree. So it's still, even though it's a long way away from where you know, the people might be standing, they still can appreciate the character of the tree and it does a really great job of lighting the, you know, the flora around it. Now, did you light other trees this same way with just a down light and no up lights? Um, it's kind of, yes, we do do that on occasion. We, we mix it up, um, you know, to kind of give a variability of intensity mm -hmm. on different trees mm -hmm. and things just to give it a little, uh, you know, just kind of a flowing texture of light is basically the mm -hmm. concept behind that. And, and what helps you make that decision? What 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 is it? What makes a tree better for downlighting as opposed to a tree better for uplighting? Okay. Well, I think that a, a lot of the trees out west here are lend themselves to uplighting just due to the beauty of the nature of the bark and the, mm -hmm. and the buildup of the tree. We try to incorporate the downlighting just to kind of uh, give a balance and a you know a little bit of. Uh, difference between the different lightings just so your eye kind of tricks your eye into seeing more than one effect you know you can go either way on that that's kind of a what your restraints might be and what your what you can what your budget will accept. So Chris, tell me a little bit about the lighting plan that you have set up over here. Uh, what well, we're we're standing at the entryway into the residence um, we've got two beautiful specimen trees an olive and a uh, Palo Verde here okay. uh -huh. um, what we did was we decided to do down lighting to kind of accent this, yeah. along with the uplighting on the trees, um, it kind of differentiates this residence from the other residences in the area. So, so what is unique about downlighting? Why do you decide to downlight a tree? Uh, downlighting is the most natural form of light. Uh, it's what we're all used to seeing, and contractors seem to always want to just uplight. Um, yeah. But what it does is it just brings a different effect coming down through. It helps you illuminate uh, plants and annuals on the ground below. Okay. So it looks like you've you've selected to downlight in two ways with a directional uh, downlight like the JB up there and then a few pendants. So tell me about it. Yeah, what we used was the uh, J-Box mount on the JB fixture up there to 
illuminate the inside of the tree, the multi-trunk Palo Verde, and okay. also catch the uh, uh -huh. specimen plants that are below. And, and, and what is your goal when you, when you, you aim or direct that directional downlight down at the tree? What, what, do you, what is your goal in trying to create? Our first goal is to hide the source of the light. Okay. So what we do is we use the limb along with the, sh the shroud on the JB fixture to help shield that. And then our next goal is to just get the interior of the tree that's okay. usually not illuminated with up lights. Okay, and you're really highlighting the, the, the branching structure, right? Even skimming that one, all, the first one all the way down. Correct, yep. I bet that's gonna look great. What about the, the pendant lights, the VEs and LEs? Yeah, we use two different types here. Uh, we went with the, the LE, which is the one LED, a little bit softer. And then in the center here, we went with the VE to kind of throw a bigger pool of light. Okay. And, and what does that, that natural pendant light kind of create? What does it do? Um, it does a very nice job moonlighting, mm -hmm. uh, creating sec uh, shadowing if you can get up into the secondary canopy. Okay. Illuminates this area if, if the uh, people are traveling down, up or down, you know, for parties and whatnot. Just gives a, a safety feel. Yeah, I bet it does. It's, it's very natural, inviting, and even I like the, the smooth transitions of light. You don't get a lot of hard lines when you have tent hanging pendant lights. That's correct. So tell me, Chris, a little bit about this area that we're lighting now. Uh, this area is actually uh, the courtyard of the hotel. It's kind of the center meeting place, and uh, we've got palm trees lining both sides of the uh, grass area. Yeah, you do. There's how many? Like 23? There's 24? 23 uh, total palms. Wow. Okay, great. So, so in an area as, as high traffic as this area with the courtyard, how do you decide to light this area? Uh, we took a couple things into consideration. We wanted to bring out the aesthetic beauty of the palms. Okay. Um, that was uh, number one. And number two, we wanted to bring out the, uh, make sure it was safe to travel through here at night. So, so focusing on aesthetics and functionality, what, what type of lights or categories do you use for that? Or we'd use down lighting for the safety aspect. Again, the higher we can get the fixture, the more light output or the wider area you're going to get with the light. Okay. Um, we've got JBs and DEs on the palms, probably about 15 feet up, shooting down onto the path. Okay. All right, perfect. So really the, the down lights are really more of a functional light? Functional and safety, yes. So um, now we're talking about just this tree in general, but it's really not just this one tree, right? It's, it's both trees along the entire side? It's a very large area. Again, these trees are probably 15 to 20 feet apart. And there's, again, there's 23 of them. And we've also got across the other side of the lawn area. Now we've got a nice wide open space. Okay. And what this is gonna allow us to do is, uh, you know, light the hardscape mm -hmm. and the grass area. Okay. Now the challenge here is they got a big golden retriever, right? So we didn't wanna put a lot of path lights that the dog could trip on. And so what we did was we looked up. Okay. And right here we have a 20 foot eave. So we can tuck some JB uh, down lights up yeah. in there yeah. and we can down light and moonlight from mm -hmm. up that area. Now, uh, coming from so high, maybe close to the house, how do you make the light transition smoothly without making a harsh circle on the ground? I think the big thing is, is the, the elevation that we're coming from. So we're so high up mm -hmm. that we can angle it just a little bit okay. and we can evenly wash the area. Interesting. Now, also, what about the color temperature? I mean, warm light on the, on the grass, how's that going to look at night? Well, typically when I downlight, I like to use moonlight effect. So what I'm going to try and do is go away from an incandescent and with the FX, mm -hmm options, it allows us to switch the filters. So I can go from an amber to a blue filter. And the blue filter is going to kind of color balance with the moonlight. Now, is it, a, is it a really harsh blue that we're talking about or something more lighter? It's actually so light that you don't even really notice it. it it's lit by low voltage, but when you're out here, it doesn't look like it's lit at all. It's just safe and secure. Perfect. That's, that's the, the perfect effect for this wide space when the homeowner wants to use it at night. Yeah, exactly. And there's one other thing with the dimmability of it. We can have settings for party mode where it's nice and lit and bright, and we can also dim it down for security in the evening. Perfect. Down lighting is the most natural lighting technique. Use down lights to softly illuminate gardens, shrubs, and landscape vegetation during the late evening and at night. Down lights installed in man-made structures like pavilions, gazebos, or trellises provide a nice light to high traffic areas. When you install down lights above a tree canopy, you can achieve a very dramatic moonlighting look with shadows. You can also use down lights to illuminate walkways or areas with changing elevation.